Sorry. So I'd like to ask about, um, so feeling the truth around the abuse. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I've felt a lot of my emotions, unless you want to tell me differently. <laughs> but um, yeah, a I lot of times, so. I, a lot of times I do feel like I can't feel anything. So I'm wondering, is that my resistance to feeling, or is there spirit influence, like attachments that don't want me to feel? Well, there are, but you know, you have resistance to feeling. The reality is that every person on earth who's been abused, who doesn't want to feel about the abuse, attracts a whole group of people of the same gender generally from the spirit world who have also been abused, who think the best course of action is to not feel about it. Right? And that's a normal attraction. Of course that's going to be attraction, but it all begins with the fact that the person on earth doesn't want to feel about it. And if you go numb, you don't want to feel. Uh, that's reality. If you're numb, you don't want to feel. So be honest about it. I don't want to feel the truth. I don't want to feel it. Be honest about how, you know, and one feeling you will have is how angry you are that you have to feel it. That, that'll be one feeling that you eventually go through about how angry you feel that somebody did something to you that now you have to feel about. The majority of people who have been abused don't get beyond that one emotion. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like I went to an adult survivors of child abuse uh, thing for about three years. Every single person there told me the same story that they told people three years later that were the first people who came. They told the same story to the same, to the same story, the same inflections, the same tears, the same everything, but they never dealt with it. They just told the same story over and over and over again because they never got to feel the truth it's the truth you have to feel. The problem that most abusers feel is they feel the error. Do you know what I mean by that? So what did the abuser tell you? Through their actions they told you certain things. They told you you're no good. So what do you believe? You're no good. What do you feel? You're no good. Is it true? No, it's not. It's not going to heal you. You have to feel the truth to heal, not the error to heal. Do you understand? You have to get beyond feeling the error and fe into feeling the truth eventually. The truth is that you are worthy. Right? That's the truth. But they, they cause you to feel this. So this is what you feel all the time. You're feeling the error that you're not worthy. At some point you're going to have to feel the truth that you are worthy. To do that, you're going to have to release the error properly. But you're living in the error. I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. It's like you're going around, and this happens to most people who have been harmed, they go around believing it for the rest of their lives without confronting the belief system. So, for example, for yourself, you're going around believing that people just want to harm you all the time. People want to attack you. That's all you're going to ever attract. That's not true. It's one of the holes that are here that can be patched up. Right? That's true. And it can be patched up by feeling it properly. That's true. And eventually you'll get to feel the truth, which is that you won't be attacked all the time. That you'll be free of people attacking you all the time. That's the real truth that eventually you'll get to feel. So you have to feel the truth of what happened to you and the, feel, the truth from God's perspective and eventually to heal the problem. And most of us don't do that. Most of us feel the error only. And so we never heal. Mary, you'd like to... So? Oh, it's actually a sincere question, babe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I think it is. Maybe it's going to be a statement. <laughs> <laughs> um, Go on. It's about what you're saying. Because yep. I feel I sense a few people grappling with what you just stated about feeling truth versus Definitely. feeling error. Yep. And my experience is having memories of abuse myself and also memories of yucky things being done to me um, in my childhood and various things, is that often when I'm feeling the error, uh, I can get into a self-punishing place, which is not actually... I, I tell myself that's feeling the error, but it's actually not. It's re-abusing myself. Correct. So here's the symptoms of feeling the error. One is self-attack. 
So I get into this cycle where I just go, I'm an idiot, this is useless, I am crap, you know. Yep. And it just gets very, it ends up, there's not even any tears anymore, it's just internalised rage Correct. towards myself. Correct. Yep. So the attack of yourself, internalised rage towards yourself, yep. And then I do other really self attacking physical actions, like I overeat. Overeat. And before I found Divine Truth, I used to drink a lot of alcohol, yeah. occasionally take drugs, you know, whatever would get me away from just living in that feeling of the error. So that's self-abuse. Yeah. Yes? Um, There's other ones you've had? It becomes very circular. I can't... Does? Yeah. But I'm thinking more of the hopeless feeling that oh, you yes, often tell yourself. Definite you feel hopeless. Despair and hopelessness. Where you feel there's no point in dealing with it anyway. It's, it's never, never going to change. never going to change. Or leave me. Yeah. It's never going to leave me. It's no point. I might as well just shove it back down using whatever technique I can. Right? Keep it under control. Because the situation's hopeless. Right? This is all error-based thinking, by the way. Can you see why? From God's perspective, is it hopeless? No. You can always release something. From God's perspective, is it right to abuse yourself? No. You should never abuse yourself or anybody else. From God's perspective, is it right to attack yourself? No. You should never attack yourself or anybody else. You know, you need to, it applies just as much to other people, to yourself, as it does to other people. So what other techniques do we have which demonstrate that we are feeling the error rather than the truth. So, denial. But a lot of times when we're in denial, we're not feeling anything. So I'd probably like to focus on when we're actually feeling something, but it's not helping us. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, yes, but that could be a, a rejection was the word uh, that was used, and perhaps we can use the microphone so that way we can get the sound. Um, but again, that could be an actual emotion that we need to feel, or it could be uh, an issue of self abuse Projection onto others? Well, yeah, let's, let's say anger, shall we? That's what I was going to say, yeah, anger. Right, to be more specific. Uh, and let's do another one, which is related to anger, but, but is a much more insidious. Judgment. And I, and I find I ju I'm judging others and myself. Correct. Constantly when Correct. I'm in this place. Yeah. So anger is, is the projection from yourself outwards to others or to yourself. You might be angry with yourself or you might be angry with others. A judgment is when you are judging yourself or judging others. These are all indications that you are not feeling the truth. You are actually feeling the error. You know, and when you do that, this is very cyclical. It continues over and over and over again. And you can go on for years like this. And in fact, there's been people who've gone on for decades like this. And some people go on their whole life on earth like this. And a lot of their life in the spirit world until they realize what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. So I've found I do that because I'm actually afraid to feel the truth. Yes. And this is an important fact to realize is the main reason why we choose to do all of those things is because our parents taught us to do all of those things rather than to place the responsibility on the people who created the problem. In other words, our parents, in avoidance of their own responsibility of what they felt in their life, taught you that you had to do this in order to get their approval, their acceptance and so forth, and so now you believe that once you see an error inside of yourself, you've got to do all of these things. And all of those things won't actually help you release the error. Right? All they do, all that is, is living in the error. Because all of these things are erroneous positions from God's perspective. So naturally, they're not going to help you release anything. And all that you're doing by doing these things is really doing what your parents wanted you to do in order to accept their treatment of you. So all you're doing is reinfecting yourself with the same disease over and over again. Your parents wanted you to attack yourself because then, then they didn't have to bother doing it. 
Your parents wanted you to abuse yourself because then they didn't have to abuse you and you were under control. They wanted you to feel like it was hopeless without them. Without them, everything's hopeless. They want you to be angry, but not with them, with yourself. Many times they want you to be angry. Now, of course, that spills over generally in our, in our adult life to others. And they want you to judge, generally, but not them. Yeah. And they're happy with me attacking myself because then I won't feel attacked by them. Exactly. The majority of people will not attack you or abuse you if you are attacking yourself or abusing yourself. And you're not sensitive to what, they're, what they've already done in terms of attack and abuse. Correct. There's an underlying acceptance inside of the, of the person emotionally that I deserved all of this anyway. I deserved it. Make sense? Yep, if we go side. You want to say more, maybe? Yeah, it's all right. Is it changing the subject, though? No? Yep. So, what do you want to say? So, um, and this is where the kind of question, possibly a statement, comes in. Yep. <laughs> uh, feeling the truth, to me, how that feels to me now, is that I allow myself to feel the pain yes. of the erroneous beliefs I have about myself. Yes. But more importantly, the pain, it happens really when I allow myself to feel the pain of what happened in relation to God's truth. So sometimes I did this shitty thing and yeah. I'm feeling, God's truth is that was a shitty thing Mary used her will to do yeah. and that hurts. Yeah. And sometimes it's actually someone really hurt me there. They used their will then and that hurt. Yeah. God's, God's opinion on that is that they did something there that was harmful to me yeah. and I'm feeling the pain of that harm. The key always is to feel the pain, yeah. whether whatever its source. Yeah. Now, this is not feeling the pain. This is, this is actually perpetrating more pain. That's the difference. So there's one thing that's feeling the pain. When you actually feel pain, the pain gets relieved. When you do these kind of things, the pain intensifies because you are perpetrating more pain, whether it's to yourself or to others. So, so from a, um, you could say from a, even from a spiritual and emotional perspective, when you choose to feel the pain of whatever the pain actually is, the truth, the, the painful truth, if you like, of course in the end you won't see it as that, you'll see it as a freedom, freeing truth, but it's painful when you first come to acknowledge it. It's like the surgeon with the scalpel cutting your flesh to get something out, right? There's a feeling of pain there. When you feel the pain itself, then you will not revert to these behaviours. If you're reverting these to these behaviours, it's a sign that you prefer to feel the error rather than feeling the pain. In fact, we almost do it because the pain of doing that is preferable to us than this pain. Mm -hmm. The irony is this pain perpetrates more pain. So it doesn't actually release anything. It actually creates more pain to ourselves and others. So it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt down the track doing this. Again, at some point. You want to say? This is the part now where the question happens. Yep. Um, so... <laughs> Yep. <laughs> the, <laughs> the only emotion in that list in, aligned with the error that I ever feel any relief experiencing is hopelessness. Now, sometimes I know I choose hopelessness in rage, but, and that's a very dead feeling. It's very... It's mm. not only a dead feeling, you can feel when it's enraged because you can feel, what the bloody use is this doing this? You know, you can feel yeah. the rage in it. Yeah. But when you truly feel hopeless, you'll feel the pain of hopelessness, which is a real gr soft grieving emotion. Very, very different experience. Yeah. So that's, and that to me feels like when fear has overwhelmed me and I'm not feeling it and I just feel hopeless then. But grieving it sort of softens me. A lot of this me. kind of hopelessness where it's, it is angry hopelessness mm -hmm. really, where you want to tell yourself it's hopeless and you feel angry that it's hopeless, and you feel, what's the, what's the point? And you often feel quite, you know, expletive, 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 <laughs> what's the point? Yeah. Type of thing, because it's, it, you're so angry about it. And that's an indication that you're in this error-based mm -hmm. feeling. When you feel the pain of hopelessness, it's more of a soft, grieving uh, emotion. 
it's not a it's not a huge rage that you feel everything's hopeless and you're just going to give up anyway and you're not going to do anything. Yeah. Thanks, Thomas. Yeah. Selena, if we go Selena then. So. so that soft hopelessness would that be more like um, I'm a loser? Sorry. Would it be a feeling like I'm just a loser? No. Not good at anything. That's this. That. That's another one of these. That's still anger. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the soft hopelessness it just feels like a grief of hopelessness. It's just grief. Like, yeah. Sorry. Is the truth that you should fear them? Fear these. Fear these parents. Like, is there not some? Would fear not like the recognition that they are something you should be afraid of? Why should you be afraid of them? Well, because they can perpetrate these things on you. You're just a child. Uh, they can only perpetrate them on you when you're a child. What are you now? Well, an adult. So they can't perpetrate them on you unless you allow it when you're an adult. Do you get what I'm saying? If yeah. You believe, yeah. If you are afraid of your own parents when you're an adult, you are living as a child still with your parents. Does everyone get that? But I think we may, be, we may do that. Most people do do that. That's, I guess that's what I'm feeling inside of me, is this real connection to fear. Like, my parents are both past, yeah. but I still fear all of those things about them. You fear all of these things? Well, no, them. I fear... You fear what they did, or fear... That no, I fear that I still need to live in response to their opinion and their actions and their, what they were perpetrating on me. Yeah, which means you're still a child. You haven't grown up yet. Yeah. yeah. How old are you, sorry? Yeah. 65. 65, <laughs> okay. So you're a 65-year-old child. So how long is it going to take before you let go of this fear of your parents? Can you see it's an act? No, exactly. It has to exactly. happen, doesn't it? Exactly. Point? Exactly. That's yeah. what I was feeling. Why do we fear our parents? What's the main reason why we fear our parents? Uh, just use the mics. So. Loss of love. Like feeling like you've, there, you just, there's no love. No, it's not the main reason why we fear our parents. Let's have a go over here. What was your name? Hi, I'm Lisette. Lisette. It's for me, it's because I need them to take care of me. No, that's not true either. You don't. Oh. <laughs> you don't need them to take care of you. There's one main reason why you fear your parents. Sorry? We're still seeking their approval? You are, but that's not the reason why you fear oh, them. Oh, okay. Nina? We don't want to confront the fact that they never loved us. That's true, but what about that don't we want to... The, why don't we want to confront it? Because What's we'll the, feel unlovable and uncared for. So what are we preventing? Our own feelings. The only reason why we fear our parents is because we want to prevent our own feelings. The only reason why you, pref you fear anything is because you want to prevent your own feelings about it. It's the only reason why you're afraid of anything, in fact. Does everyone get that? So... So it's not your parents' attitude towards you that you're afraid of. It's feeling your parents' attitude towards you that you're afraid of. Do you see the difference? Because you can feel your parents' attitude towards you and release that emotionally. And then I can guarantee to you, you will not be afraid of them no matter what they project at you. You just have to be prepared to feel the emotion about what they feel about you. And most of us aren't prepared to do that. Most of us don't want to do that. Most of us want them to feel differently. So you know what we're doing with our parents most of the time is this. Here we are. So here's me. Little Johnny, I was called. Here's my mum and dad. When I was little, they were bigger than me, right? They had power over me. They had all these things. But, but now I'm an adult. I'm an adult. I have nothing to fear from my parents except to feel my own emotions about what they feel about me. That's the thing I'm afraid of doing. Now, 
I am afraid of doing that because they, they might still be projecting stuff at me. In fact, highly likely they are. Right? It's very unusual for the parent to change before the child does. It's very unusual for a person who abused us in some way to change before we, the person who's the victim of abuse, change. Right? So the reality is that even as we're changing, they're probably still projecting at us things. And this applies to you if you have children, by the way. You're probably projecting things at your child that they feel is unpleasant and, and they are change, might have changed from there, but you're still projecting the same thing. It's the same principle. This projection coming out of you towards your child, or in my case, if I'm the child, I'm receiving the projection. If I've relieved myself of all of the fear associated with any feeling inside of myself about myself, then anything they project at me, I will no longer believe. And I will no longer feel. Automatically. I won't believe. So if they might be saying, little Johnny, you're a crock of shit. Right? And, I, and I, if I have dealt with this emotion that I feel my parents feel that way about me, and I've worked my way through it, and I know that I aren't, I know that I'm worth something, they can project whatever they want at me. It's not going to have any effect whatsoever. So it's not a fear of the parents that I really have. It's a fear of feeling my own emotional response to what they project at me that I have. And the same applies in every single relationship you have. It's not the fear that you have in that relationship of the other person. It's a fear of feeling your own feelings as a response. This is our main problem. Our main problem is that we are unwilling to feel our own feelings that are responding to whatever is coming at us. And that's the area that we need to do most of our work. And, and when we do that, you will no longer fear, fear anyone. So you can actually get to the point where you are still got emotions inside of yourself, you still got problems inside of yourself, but you no longer fear anyone around you because you realise that the only thing to fear is your own emotional response. That's the only thing you're really afraid of. You're afraid of whether you can cope with your own emotional response. That's what you're afraid of. And once you know that you can cope with your own emotional response from anything you no longer are afraid of anything right? to the point where it restricts your life. So the thing for us to focus on is not what are they doing to me, but is rather what am I feeling about what they are doing to me. Because once you work through that and you're no longer afraid of dealing with that, then whatever they do, you'll be fine with. Right? And I mean whatever they do. Like they can murder you and you'll still be fine with it because you've now you know that you can cope with any feeling. Right? Does that make sense? Okay.